Good afternoon. We begin there. New guidance released this morning for K-12 schools to prepare for potential reopening in the fall. Those guidelines released in an almost 30-page document by state educators. Kayla Green has a breakdown of what's in that document and joins us live here at noon. Kayla, what's in there? Yes, Mark, the Education Department has released guidelines for schools and they can begin submitting their reopening plans as early as the end of this week. The 28-page document includes preventative measures that schools should be considering. Some of those include health checks, social distancing, management of sick people, health hygiene, face coverings and PPE, and cleaning and disinfecting. The guidance also says schools must create plans that include in-person instruction, remote instruction, and a hybrid or a combination of the two. Districts should provide students access to meals each day, and that includes students physically in school and students learning from home. There are also specific instructions for transportation, including cleaning buses and developing plans based on each district's geography. Schools must provide access to the internet and a device to each family. In-person special ed services should be prioritized based on need. Just before these plans were released, local group Rock for Educational Freedom held a press conference regarding reopening. Founder Christina Higley says she wants students to return to school in person five days a week in the fall. Believe it or not, we do have local control, okay? And we need to start using that local control to do what is best for our schools. These are these superintendent schools. They should be appalled at this point that they are waiting like they are for these answers and that basically they could spend this time putting together these plans and they could basically be rejected and we still don't have school. The guidance also stresses the importance of social and emotional well-being for students during this time. The state suggests easing into academic content slowly to help students adjust. Live in Webster, Kayla Green. News 8. Outstanding summation. Kayla, thank you. The American Academy of Pediatrics recently came out with a position statement on the importance of children returning to school. Dr. Colleen Fogarty, the department chair for the University of Rochester Department of Family Medicine, discussed that position statement with us this morning. She says children staying out of school could have a bigger impact on those who rely upon school meals and other school resources. Yes, uh, the main thing, of course, is learning, and there's emerging evidence about the degree of learning loss suffered by children through the pandemic. And as is typical, the, the more vulnerable children, younger children, and children with fewer resources have had more learning loss, uh, and this is thought to have repercussions into the future. The other important things are the social and emotional development. Um, being with trusted adults, being with peers, uh, learning how to work out problems. And then for many kids, being in school is a way to access a, a hot meal or a, or a good meal for breakfast and lunch, as well as uh, school-based health care centers. So much at stake. To see the full interview with Dr. Fogarty, head to rochesterfirst.com.